guys, what's up? It's your girl Mary Lene with Monday's Movie Review. For all my couch potatoes and bed watchers who love binge watching movies and TV shows, this is the show for you. One quick thing before we get started, make sure you guys are subscribed and join our review team so that you guys can be up to date on when a new review is coming out, whether it's TV or movie, and also so you can know new segments that I am bringing up to my channel. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at just.lvmg and also visit my website, flixballinate.com. Thank you. For today's movie review, we will be getting into the new film on Netflix called To All the Boys I've Loved Before, so you guys can go check it out. I write a letter when I have a crush so intense that I don't know what else to do. There are five total. Peter with the beautiful eyes. Kenny from camp. Lucas from homecoming. John Ambrose from Model UN. And Josh, the boy next door. love this movie it's a it's a cute romantic movie but it's not overly overly dramatic with the love and the gushiness it has a lot of it has a big twist and a big turn and i really love how it played out in this film so let's get into the logistics of this film it was directed by susan johnson it was directed by susan johnson and it was adapted by the book to all the boys i loved before by jenny Han. From what I haven't read the book, but from what I heard, I hear that it's a very great adaptation from a young adult novel, which, you know, a lot of times they leave a lot of things out or they put things in that were never there. So for a lot of people to say that is a good adaptation means that the directors and the writers took a lot from the book and put it into the movie. So let's talk about our cast. We have Lana Kandor. We have Israel Broussard. I'm sorry if I said his name wrong. We have Noah Centineo. Janelle Parrish for all my Pretty Little Liars fan. We're going to talk about two aspects of the film in this review. First starting with the characters and then we're, well first starting with the plot and then leading into the characters and then I'll give you guys a rate of whether you should go see this or not. So let's get into the plot. The plot of the story is based, it's based around a girl named Laura Jean aka Lana Kander and she's in her junior year of high school and she's realized that she's never had love, never, you know she doesn't really do things. Her favorite thing to do is just watching the Golden Girls reruns with her little sister Kitty. But Laura Jean's older sister Margo is going off to college in Scotland and Margo's boyfriend used to be Laura Jean's best friend. So Laura Jean's best friend Josh is dating Laura Jean's sister Margo and since the two have gotten together Laura Jean and Josh really haven't been as close as they used to be. Of course it's going to be evident when your best friend dates your, your sister. So what Laura Jean does when she's in love with somebody and she can't do anything about it, she writes them letters and then she puts them in her in this box that her mom gave her. By the way, her mom passed away when she was little, so this is something really important to her. In total, Laura Jean has written five letters. One to Josh, one to Peter Kavinsky, one to this boy named Lucas, and two others who aren't really in this film as much, so they're not as important. But in total, five letters. So the girl has been in love five times unless she thinks she was in love. Her little sister is like so, she's, her little sister is something else. Her little sister decides that, you know what, I'm tired of my sister being here on a Saturday night just with me when I cancel my own plans, and her sister's like in sixth grade. So she takes the letters, which are already addressed and everything, and she mails them off. At school, you know, um, the first person to come up to her is Peter, Peter Kravinsky, who um, is dating Laura Jean's like arch nemesis. So he comes up to her and he's like, oh, like, I appreciate your letter, but it's just not gonna happen. And Laura Jean and um, his history is like they kissed during Spin the Bottle one time. But Laura Jean's friend at the time, uh, Genevieve, liked him. And so when Laura Jean kissed him, Genevieve was like, oh, that's how we doing. No girl cool. But now Genevieve and um, Peter are together. But at the time of when he got the letter, they had broken up. So he's like, you know, me and Genevieve just broke up. So I'm not really looking for anything. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? And then, bam, he whips out a letter that Kitty mailed to him. And then, girl is like, about to pass out. Like, oh my goodness, I'm going to kill my sister. As her and Peter are talking about the letter, Josh comes up, who used to be her best friend, and is like, hey, yo, I got a letter too. And she's like, oh no, I can't deal with this. So she like kisses Peter to distract Josh, and then she runs away. All that crazy drama. I know it sounds dramatic, but it's actually really, really good. Peter is like, hmm, this girl kind of has a thing for me, he thinks. He's like, and he really is broken up about his girlfriend, Jen, like, breaking up with him. So he hits up Laura Jean and is like, yo, 
why don't me and you just pretend to go out to make my old girl jealous so that she can get back with me and then if you my girl josh ain't gonna think that you like him because laura jean didn't want josh to know that she had feelings for him because that's her sister's boyfriend she don't look like a whole thotty she's like all right bet we're gonna do this but you can't kiss me and you have to be cute and laura jean is like an old coat like i am and she loves 16 candles so you know the whole opening scene where you know everybody got their bae's um hand in their pocket she's like you can do that we can be cool like that but you can't kiss me they play it off and like i feel as though in this film you really fall in love with the idea of them being a couple because they're just so cute together like they can talk about things you know peter kavinsky's dad left them when he was younger and laura jean's mom passed away so they have that connection to talk about they do all the couples things they put each other on instagram they take selfies together go to parties together and you know laura jean is like okay i'm starting to feel him like i don't know it doesn't feel like uh it doesn't feel like a you know a pretend anymore it feels real to her and that scares her because you know she really is afraid of loving somebody because you know she loved her mom so much and then her mom died but i can understand that you know people do go through things what i really liked about this is that you know at first i thought that the love story was between Lori Jean and Josh because you know the first scene the first scene is her talking about Josh so I'm like okay this is about her and Josh and her trying not to love her sister's ex-boyfriend no it's about her and Peter and they go through so much together and they realize that they actually really like each other and of course you know Peter's ex-girlfriend Jen is gonna be you know the girl you know the classic mean girl so she tries to break them up but you know I think Peter like from the jump he had he had like an England that he was gonna like Laura Jean, so I really liked this film. It was very good. It, you know, brought out the sappy person in me. I'm not usually one to, you know, tear up and stuff, but this really, really was cute and it was heartfelt and I feel like it was very relatable to everyone. So I really love this film. Also, the cinematography in this film was great. It kind of reminded me of a Wes Anderson film because Wes Anderson puts his um, camera on a dolly and just moves it across, moves it across. And that's kind of the sequences that we saw in this film. So, I, and like, I know it wasn't directed by him, but I feel as though he had some type of influence. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I saw. And I really liked the color scheme, the color grading. It really popped, especially when they go up to the ski house. Um, especially when they go to the mountains and the ski house and everything. The colors and the white and the blues of the snow and the sky really set the mood for the whole film. And I thought it was very good. And has a nice, like, unique look to it. And it kind of reminded me of the look and feel of Moonlight a little bit. But I think that it was very, it was really something that popped out in the film for me more than any. But beyond the acting, which is very good, the color scheme and the cinematography were great. A lot of bird's eye shots, a lot of, you know, one person in a shot, um, you know, conversations. I really like that. That's like my go-to thing. So those are very good. So let's get into the characters. Personally, I think that Lana Kander is a great actress, even though this is the first um, film that I've seen her in even though I saw um, the X-Men film that she was in and I didn't even know that it was her Peter Kavinsky I thought he was he's not your typical bad boy he's he's more like you know he I feel like he's a bad boy because he's thought to be a bad boy you know he's a jokester but he has a soft side and I like that um, Laura Jean can bring that out of him something that I think the his old girl couldn't do so that's why he liked her so much I like Josh because He's like, he reminds us all of that, you know, heartbrokenness, you know, our heartbroken selves that are just, you know, trying to get over somebody and just like in a daze. Like, I feel in this entire film, he was just sitting there in a daze, like, wow, what am I going to do with my life? But towards the end of the film, he starts to like collect himself back together and he realizes that, you know, him and Marco are done, so he has to move on. And I feel as though I liked his character a lot. But honestly, it is so refreshing to see an Asian lead. I think the last time I saw an Asian lead was in Mulan, and that was, you know, cartoon. And I really am excited to see more Asian leads. I'm excited to see more women in leads. And I think Lana Condor really, you know, she did her thing in this. Like, it was very, very good. I loved that they brought different cultures into this. Like, again, I didn't see the book, so maybe in the book they talked about their cultures a lot. But um, from somebody who hasn't read the book, I really, really liked I haven't read the book, and I don't know if they put, they input their cultures in this, but 
from not reading the book and seeing this film, I think they did a great job with implementing the Korean culture. They talked a lot about Korean culture and I really appreciated that. I'm not even Korean, but I always love seeing different cultures on the screen other than, you know, our usual things. I'm not gonna lie, like, we all know who we see on TV screen. So I'm glad to see some diversity, some inclusion in this film, and I thought it was very, very good. So it's time for my rating, guys, from one being never see it again to 10 being watch it. I would definitely give it a, on a, on a scale, I'm going to give it an 8. It was very good. I really think that you guys should go watch it on a scale of Netflix films. Because I feel like Netflix has a different, you know, I feel like Netflix is its own genre sometimes. Because you never know what you're going to get watching a Netflix film. So for a Netflix film, I think it's definitely a 10 in that genre. But for, you know, putting it on um, mainstream and, you know, like, um, production-wise, I think it's like at least an 8. So... There's my rating, guys. Please go watch it. It was a very good film. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, um, and do all that. And be here Thursday for TV reviews. Bye. Oh, one more thing before you guys dip. I am starting a new segment on my channel called Black People News where you can hear good things, great things, new things about black people because in mainstream media all we hear is the negative things. We rarely hear anything good about black people. So if you have anything going on in your life, whether you're in Alaska or you're in Georgia, please email me at Lene, the creator at flixbylene.com or you can go on my website and go to flixbylene.com and leave a comment in the contact section so that on the contact section so that I can know what accomplishments you have done, what's going on in your community, and we can get it out into the media. Alright guys, see you later.